How's it going guys? I'm uh, back. I've got part two of this uh, TUZ420 Tatarin review. So there it is in the garage now. Obviously I can buy it. It's about 140 grand. It shrinks the screen. You can see there like the power to weight ratio and blah blah blah. That's a little description of it. It basically says that it's a military vehicle. It was kind of repurposed as a civilian use vehicle for like Russian hunters and stuff that live in the middle of nowhere that need that kind of vehicle to get around. So uh, the customization options, you've got one engine, that's it, so there's no engines fine, the engine's pretty decent in it. Gearbox, you've got the special or the advanced special. Uh, I'll show you quickly what the special gearbox is like and then afterwards I'll show you uh, the difference sort of between that and the advanced special. So with this normal gearbox that you get with it, it's plenty capable by the way, you get high, low, reverse and neutral as normal. Uh, you got four gears in auto and it gets up to speed pretty quick. You can tap L1 to jump up the gears pretty quick. So that's about as fast as it goes with this gearbox. Uh, that's it in the high. That's how fast or slow it is in low. And then this is what it's uh, like in reverse. Auto reverse and reverse are the same thing. And again I set off, tap the L1, it jumps straight to third gear. I'm already in fourth now, and yeah, that's about. This is about as quick as it goes, but like I say, it tends to go everywhere at about that speed. So uh, yeah, obviously the other gearbox, the advanced special, it doesn't make any difference to to your uh, power to weight and all that. It just adds like a selection of low gears, and there's also fifth gears, uh, five gears in auto. So I'll show you that at the end. I'll just go through the rest. There's no raised suspension, and again, it doesn't really need it to be honest. There's no tyres, it's already got mud tyres on which are basically the best unless you're in snow. I suppose the chained ones would be a bit better. As for the winch, I put the middle one, the advanced scout on. You could put the high power one on. The reason I went for the advanced one is because it specifically said it's got more range as well and I'm not going to be towing semi-trailers and stuff because you can't so I just went for the one with the most range that still said it's also got more power and it, it does fine. Uh, frame add-ons, you've got the roof rack, that's it, that thing you can see at the back, spare tyre, some repair stuff and fuel. To be fair, it does hold 150 repair points, which is pretty good. The maintenance trailer's only got 300. Uh, so in the visuals, you've got beacons, various different types. I've put those two ones on that are just in front of the roof rack. You've got horns. Uh, these sun visors, you look though, it's level 30 to unlock that, so I'm not really asked anyway, I didn't really want them. Uh, rooftop, this is like the lights, you can see like the white lights, the three circular ones and the two rectangle ones on the roof bar. That's what they are. As for rims, you've only got tattering rims and they suit it pretty well. Colours, you've got all the normal colours. The reason I've gone bright yellow is because it kind of, you can see a lot more detail, you know, all under the wheel arches, all the different angles. When you go for a dark colour, it just all kinds of blends in, so yeah, that, that's personally why I've just gone for bright yellow. Uh, there's all the other colours. Like I say, this black, it does look pretty nice, but it just doesn't highlight it all as well. As for the uh, camos, you've got this one, which is like a two-tone green. You've got that one that's blue and white. You've got this one that's kind of beige and black. It's pretty nice, to be honest. I quite like that one. I nearly put that one on. I quite like that as well, red and white. It does look, uh, does look pretty good. This last one, not too keen on. It's a bit garish green and sort of beige and then lighter green around the windows. Not my favourite, if I'm honest. But yeah, still pretty decent selection of colours. Like I say, I'm going to stick with this bright yellow for now. So this is the advanced gearbox. As you can see, it's got five gears in auto. It's got high, uh, neutral, reverse. But it's got three different low gears. I tried setting off in high. I don't know why, <laughs> but it wasn't having it. So this is low, low. This is medium low, and this is high low, and this is high gear. High and high low are pretty much the same. Obviously it's got five gears once it gets up to speed. It's a little bit quicker with the advanced gearbox. It's not the quickest thing overall, but as I said, it basically goes everywhere pretty quick, which I like about it. I didn't mean to drop it in this ditch, but... It's very hard to roll. You have to get on a pretty damn good angle to roll it. It's just, all the weight of it is in like the chassis and the wheels, so it does sit on its wheels very nicely. And as you can see, though, even in thick snow drifts and stuff, it just keeps pulling 
for everything really and uh, yeah you soon realize you don't need to stick to the road just go where the hell you like and even driving through here it's not dropped to gear it's not slowing down or anything and to be fair I uh, I know that's downhill and I agree so I'll, uh, I'll take it uphill and show you doesn't start again not drop gear it's not slowed down its revs and uh, obviously there's only one engine for it so like I say it's definitely a very capable engine they may add more engines but it's not gagging for one or anything them barriers are a bit OP but it still just drives over that didn't even drop a gear or slow down or anything so yeah basically everywhere you go it's a beast it's I'm pretty glad I've got it it's uh there is one map I think I've got left to scout which I'll pretty sure I'll take this for and just in general there's still hidden upgrades there's a couple of them I've not found yet so just exploring all over the map this is the best thing really it just goes everywhere it climbs up everything and even in thick snow and mud it keeps going at like this speed which I like about it because a lot of vehicles crawl along through thick mud as for a snorkel or a lack of I've seen some people say oh it's not got a snorkel it's crap well, I can show you now it doesn't need a snorkel either either doesn't need one or it's already got one and it just doesn't list it because as you can see I can go in very deep water it doesn't even say dangerous water level until now when the water's basically at my roof and the engines near the back of it but when the water's a couple of inches off the roof is when it starts moaning I could just park here now and it's fine so it doesn't need a snorkel and I'm going to drive through the water now obviously the right hand side of my vehicle is like in the deeper part of the lake I was just trying to see how close I could get it but it's about now when it's moaning and as you can see the right hand side is basically underwater now the roof racks the only thing poking out I made it go a bit deeper as I turned out and it, that did cause damage a bit quicker but it was about six inches underwater by then uh, one good thing about it though, obviously you've got the uh, roof rack which, like I said, is pretty decent for a scout roof rate. You've got 150 points and four spare wheels. And the fuel, I can't remember 100%, but I think it's 120 litres. And the thing itself doesn't nail fuel. I mean, it's got, what is it, a 300... Is that 300 or 330 litre fuel tank? My uh, Navistar's got a 340 litre fuel tank, but that drinks 32 litres a minute when you're revving the crap out of it. And as you can see... It drives up these rocks, and to be fair, this was at a bit of a disadvantage. There's roll in it, and it just lands back on its wheels. I know some of you might say, well, that tree stopped it. And, uh, yeah, you're right to say that. I might be a lying bastard, but <laughs> I'll show you that it really does land back on its wheels without a tree to save it. So I'll roll it again. It takes a lot to roll, but you can just tell from when it rolls, all the weight of it is in, like, the chassis and the wheels, and it just wants to get back to its wheels. And it just does that, lands on its wheels and bounces. And uh, she's ready to go again. You can actually see when the engine animation happens, there's a little like crankshaft at the back of the engine. And apparently in real life, this thing is amphibious and it has a little propeller out the back. But obviously for the sake of game balance, they've not made it amphibious and blah blah blah. But it's still bordering on OP. I think any more and it would be OP. Uh, yeah, it climbs all over these rocks just fine. And to be fair... It's at a bit of a disadvantage in Alaska because all those rocks are covered in snow and ice and it's got the mud tyres, it hasn't got the option for chained tyres. So if I was in Michigan or Russia, climbing over rocks like this would still be a bit easier because they're not covered in snow and ice. And the nice thing about the front, because it's shaped like just a 45 degree angle, everything you hit, it just naturally wants to push the nose up, which then lets your wheels get contact. So you can climb over all sorts. Again, because it's slippy, I couldn't quite do it. But look at the angle I am, and it's still not tipped over. It's so hard to tip over that by the time you do, as you've seen, you basically have got enough momentum to just roll back onto your wheels. I've rolled it three or four times now, and I think every time it's just gone back on its wheels. I'll show you uh, a little bit in a minute with the uh, cockpit view any more in underwater there and it would have kicked me out. The reason I don't usually go in cockpit view is because as you can see most of the time you're just pointing up in the sky and you can't quite see where your wheels are and what they're doing when you're climbing over all this crazy stuff it helps to see where your wheels are. Again it was just struggling a bit because it's a, a icy rock so it's just not liking it. Once the wheels dig into the snow it gets up 
Like, it grips in the snow really well. It just doesn't like the bare rocks too much, particularly in this map. You can see I'm trying to bounce up here, and I can see that little gap there that I'm going to try. It glitches a bit here, but I'm going to wiggle my wheels into that little gap, and as soon as that side of wheels touches the snow, it pulls me straight through. Carries on climbing up. I think in some of this footage, it's going up the gears as it's going up rocks like that, so... The other nice thing with the nose of it, apart from the fact that it's sloped so you kind of ramp over everything, it's kind of pinched the nose in. So if you actually look at the very front of it, it's about half the width of the actual truck. So when you hit trees like this, you just glance the nose off. Like the nose can kind of pierce its way through narrow gaps and you just ram the rest of yourself through it. Funnily enough, this is one of the only times I rolled it and it didn't roll all the way. It's because I caught the tyre on the tree, but just the weight of the chassis and tyres made it lean over far enough. I then moved the tyres, which made it stall again, but I just moved the tyres back and it was at a position where I could start it. You can see that little crankshaft that would poke out the back if it had a propeller. And yeah, got the winch, winched over. Not a problem and carried on driving. So it definitely goes pretty much anywhere. I can't think of any other vehicle I've got that's even going to get close to this really. The Caterpillar is pretty good in snow but it is pretty slow and because it's so fat and lumber in it you can get stuck in trees and all sorts quite a lot. This is a bit of in-cabin footage just to show you. This is basically where I parked it where you originally find it. So this is the rock cliff. I'm just going to drive off. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have done the driver too many favours, but I didn't even... Oh, I did take a bit of damage, actually. I didn't think I did. I suppose it wasn't too happy about it, but it's tough. That's what happens. I quite like driving in the uh, <laughs> in-cabin sort of cockpit view, but... It's the sort of game where it helps to have, like, third-person view. I wasn't looking where I was going, and I actually rolled it. I have to admit defeat this time. I really did roll it, and I rolled it on an angle where <laughs> I ain't getting out of it. But while I'm uh, back at the garage, I'll have a little look in cockpit view and have a little look around. That's what the dash looks like. Some little dials in the door. That's the other side. Looks pretty cool. They're definitely like 10 out of 10 for interior design. They've gone all out compared to the old game that was just the same interior with like a 2D dashboard laid over it. This is like they've gone to town with the detail, which I definitely appreciate. Looks really good. That's your view outside when you ram your head out the window. That's what the back of it looks like, which again looks pretty cool. I don't know if that's a seat on the edge, but the seats at the back look alright. I don't know about the one in the middle of the screen. But yeah, I think she uh, she looks pretty good. There's the horn. It's one of them horns that make you sort of shit yourself if someone <laughs> did it behind you when you weren't ready for it and they just go, whoop, oh, you fucker. But yeah, it's a bit of a squeaky horn, but it's not bad. I'd prefer a truck horn. So yeah, that's what it looks like inside. We'll get started up. See, so even little animations, it actually puts it in gear. And I'll uh, I'll go for a little drive around here in cockpit view. Again, I'm in the Zimnogorsk map. Or should I say I'm back in it, because I just showed you Alaska. And I'm not really going anywhere in particular. This ends up being the start of the way to originally get the thing, but I just wanted to do a quick route off-road to show you a bit of uh, off-roading in cockpit view. Have a drink every time I say cockpit view. You'd be pissed by the end of this video. <laughs> I was driving pissed then. So bad the footage glitched. So as you can see I've uh, gone round and hit the tree but it didn't actually damage it. Them branches. Jesus Christ. Like one day they'll make a game at the end boss will be one of them fucking tree branches. But it was having no problem going through there. It didn't even have a problem pushing past them tree branches that are OP as all hell. Even this road is a... Uh, this makes it look pretty easy, but even the AMK and stuff get slowed down on this. The Zimnigorsk is definitely no joke of a map. Like, there is some thick, juicy mud all over the place, and some pretty meaty vehicles can get pretty stuck. But this thing definitely uh, is the right 
answer to that problem. This is the river you have to cross when you originally come to get it. It knocks me out of cockpit. When water goes over your windscreen, it kicks you out, but I'm just at the right level I can go back in, sticking me head out the window. Looking good. <laughs> It'd be a nice little detail, I'm not bothered, but if you could turn your windscreen wipers on it would be pretty cool. But in the end, as you'll see in a minute, the dirt and water and that on the windows just sort of fade away as I come out of the water. Now it didn't look that fast through the water, but it's still quicker than most of the vehicles through there. And you can see, you just keep pointing it where you want it to go and floor it and eventually you'll hit something. But you have to admit defeat and reverse and then you just keep going forward again to be fair as well it's got pretty good views out of all the windows like some of the trucks you drive you go into cockpit view and it's like bloody hell I can't see a bloody thing but this is actually pretty decent so I drove along the road for about 10 seconds and was like well that's enough of that I'm supposed to be testing out how good it is off-road as you can see, I just randomly tell I have no idea where I am now or where I'm going, but just keep her pinned and she keeps going. I think I fly off one cliff. <laughs> and then we go for another one. And then I roll it, but like I say, the weight of it just carries you over all the time and you just land back on your wheels, start her up and keep going. Even though this is a pretty deep river at this point, it doesn't even really slow down in this one. I am turning fully right now, but as I got the base of it caught on this big fat rock, it kind of spun me around and yeah. It can go pretty much anywhere, but it's still got the limitations of a vehicle. If you get a big fat rock wedged in the middle of it under the chassis, then you're kind of going to pivot around it and there's not a lot you can do. But again, I just re-aimed it and we uh, got straight through. Because I have absolutely no idea where the hell I am or where I'm going, but... For the sakes of footage, I just kept going forward to see what I could do. I tried getting up this slope, because again, the nose just naturally makes it nudge up things. It was getting up here, but I think I just kind of got wedged on all these trees anyway, so I couldn't really get any further. But if it's ever going to get stuck, it's kind of like this, where you get the first two wheels up and it just hasn't quite got the grip to get the rest of it up. But like I said, I think in this particular example all these trees are just not helping the situation anyway. I've seen these rocks over here, I thought I'd give them a try. <laughs> I nearly got up. But this time it did definitely get like stuck between the sort of middle set of wheels not stuck it just couldn't quite have the grip to get up in the end I needed to use the winch just for like literally a second or two if I jiggled it around enough I probably could have got up here but I just wanted to see how easy the winch would help and as you can see I only needed it for literally a second or so and that just tipped my nose down enough to pull the rest of me up <laughs> see, that's the thing, you can hardly see the road most of the time when you're in cockpit view. But it is pretty funny. And again, wherever I am now, there's a little stream here. As you can see, it doesn't even slow down for it. It just goes straight through it and carries on. And that is pretty deep mud. Most of the vehicles, even a fully tuned Navistar, would sort of hesitate a bit at that. So would the AMK. This was the step toe. This was like a few hours after I actually got this thing. I just went back and you have to repair, uh, like restore and refuel the uh, step toe. I could actually, I think I could drive it. Yeah, I can drive it now. The reason I'm turning it around, sometimes when you win winch vehicles backwards, they actually start the engine and try and drive against you. I wasn't sure if it was going to do it or not, but either way, I just turned it around quickly so I could tow it the proper way. And again, like when I just attached the winch there, this thing didn't even slow down or make a difference. It just 
goes the way you point it and it wants to keep going. So once it takes up the slack on the rope, it just drags that thing behind it. It doesn't really have much choice in the matter. That step toe as well, I'll do another video on just how to get it and whatever. It's not too bad to be fair. I thought it'd be worse than it is, but it's got all-wheel drive and diff lock. And yeah, it is pretty decent to be honest. So I rolled it now, and even then, it's definitely slowed me down a bit, but considering I'm driving through pretty thick mud that's also waterlogged, and I'm towing a truck on its side, and I'm trying to pull it over a set of logs, if you see, as soon as it gets off the logs, I can carry on kind of pulling it anyway, but then it tips over back on its wheels. <laughs> I wasn't going to give up. It's like, you can sit there on your side as long as you like. I'm just going to keep flooring it. But I'm even going back up the gears again, really, as I'm uh, towing it. This section is pretty boggy. It was a bit of a pain to get through, even with the uh, ANK. I'm pretty sure at this point, yeah, I've got the uh, just the standard gearbox on at the minute, so... I've not even got the better of the two gearboxes. I'm basically driving back down the road that you originally have to come up to find this Tatra and I'm going to tow this uh, step tow back to the garage. Again, I could drive the step tow and it wasn't that I didn't want to drive the step tow, I was just because I'd got this fairly recently. I was kind of curious as to how well this would drag it back and it uh, yeah, definitely impressed me. I don't think there's a lot you couldn't tow with this, to be honest. Even through this river, and this river's pretty deep, it's also like boggy mud underneath, and I'm kind of pushing against the current. It still gets through it pretty decently, and once I'm through it, it pulls that step tow through just fine. I, I know it's not called the step tow, but it's like the step something 310. It looks like step tow, I don't know if that they intentionally meant that or what but I just call it the step toe I just remembered though that it's not actually called that so we're near enough uh, back at the garage now this is the road that you turn off when you start to go and get this tattering As you can see, it's basically as slow slash fast on the road as it is off-road. It just doesn't really make any difference. So now I'm back at the uh, garage at the Zimnogorsk. So that was one of the easiest towing missions that I've done that I didn't really need to do. Oh, yeah, just as a quick reminder, it, you can't uh, get any trailers for it. Which, to be honest, I'm happy with, because it'd be a bit OP if you could. Because then you could use it for all sorts. It's a bit like the Khan 39 that it gives you at the beginning if you get the premium version. You can't tow trailers. So I'm going to go to this fat muddy bit in Northport. Most of you will probably know which bit I'm on about. I apologise, it glitched a tiny bit there. This was just on my way. There's this really thick mud that you have to go through to get to this warehouse and every vehicle I've gone through, even my Navistar, even the Caterpillar big fat six wheel thing struggled. So I was heading there to see how well this would do. And uh, it still did better than I thought but it definitely got slowed down by it but given how deep and annoying this mud is. Like I say, it's on Northport and there's a warehouse and there's only two ways to it. You can go this way, which is the main road, or there's a long, narrow, windy road through the mountains that I'll uh, sort of show you in a minute because I end up kind of heading that way. So considering the deepness of this mud and how sloppy and horrible it is, to be fair, this thing never actually got stuck. Whereas I think my Navistar and I think even the Caterpillar did, I kept having to like winch to trees just to get my speed up again. All I did in the end, if you drive to the edge of this it gets a little bit less sloppy and deep and you can actually move along a bit easier. But once it got out the worst of it you can see it uh, now it's already going up its gears again. 
And again, at this point, I've only got the normal gearbox in it, so... I cut that bit out. I came back through there and it went just as slow, so... There's no point in uh, wasting your time showing you just dragging through there. That's about it's only Achilles heel, though. It doesn't like insanely deep mud, but that's kind of the point of the game. Nothing really likes deep mud. So I was looking at which mountain to climb. There was that one over there, which I've already been up before in the Khan. And then there's this one, which I chose for a couple of reasons. One, I'm pretty much next to it. Two, I can drive all the way along the spine of it, which is longer. And three, I was going to head to this... Because the road between your garage and the warehouse that like winds through the mountain that you can sort of see now, I drove the Hummer up there the other uh, day, and the Hummer isn't very. I don't really like the Hummer to be honest. I don't think it's that good. But um, yeah, I sort of wanted to head that way just to see how much better this is basically. So I've just gone through that deep mud pool again, but I'm now cutting off the road and I'm going basically along the top of a mountain just to see how ridiculous this thing is, how uh, crazy the places it can go is, which is pretty crazy. See that's not it struggling with revs, every time you hear it doing that, that's just me sort of letting off the accelerator for a second. I don't think I've ever had it struggle for revs or anything. And obviously now I'm purposely choosing the most awkward route. I'm just trying to make sure I hit the peak of every sort of mountain tip just to see in my own head where if it can get to the top then that's there is no more. I kept stopping for a few <laughs> photo moments, enjoy the scenery. Again, the scenery on this game, you have to say, is uh, bloody good. Obviously the rendering distance is a hell of a lot further, but just in general it just looks really nice. That's how close you can get to tipping it <laughs> without tipping it. But then I think I'd tip it in a second anyway. But as you can see, it takes a lot for it to go, and just the weight of it, once it does go, you pretty much always have the momentum to keep going, and it just lands back on its wheels. I've never double rolled it yet, it just, once it's gone once, it tends to land back on its wheels, and it's fine. And to be fair to it now, it's obviously it's got the mud tyres on because you there isn't the option for chain tyres. They may add chain tyres, they may add the ability to tow uh, trailers and stuff, I don't know. But even if they don't, uh, modding is coming to console soon and it's already on PC. So between mods or the company, you're going to be able to get chained snow tyres on it and all sorts. You're probably able to get better engines and all sorts of things you can see on YouTube some of the modding stuff people have already added like even the Khan 39 has got like massive tires you can get super raised suspension and crazy engines in it and all sorts so there'll be a lot of uh, customization options pretty soon and they've already just made a video on YouTube the actual company telling you about modding so it definitely can't be far away because they wouldn't be hyping it up if they weren't about to drop it I believe as well in a week or two they're going to drop another Russian map that might be a snowy map which will uh, be pretty interesting. So again as you can see here I'm purposely trying to get to the tip of every thing and uh, yeah like it goes up everything. Another nice little photo moment. I think one of these is going to end up being the thumbnail. It keeps cutting ahead a tiny bit, because every time I was pausing then I kept saving screenshot and then it just kind of glitches the footage for a few seconds. So another little detail I like about this game is obviously because it's snowing on this map, all the top of my truck and my roof rack and everything has got snow on it. And it's just little details like that, like, you know with a lot of games they feel like they sort of gave it your half finished and they were like, well, fuck it, that'll do. We've got a deadline, we can't be bothered spending any more money on it. And you get all sorts of games, even Call of Duty are guilty of that stuff. Like, pretty much every time they first release the game, there's all kinds of bugs and everything that they didn't... It's almost like nobody at the company played through the game. Whereas this, it feels like they weren't rushed against any time schedule, they didn't make it an unrealistic one for themselves. 
they've had time not just to polish the game and make it a good one but even add little things like the snow settling on top of your truck and stuff so yeah I definitely think they're gonna done a bloody good job I'm gonna make like a sort of proper review video I didn't want to do it it would have got been good for views and blah 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 if I'd done it like a day after the game came out but I didn't really know the game that well myself so I don't think it was really that fair to try and make a video and go oh I know all about it I didn't whereas now I know most of what this game's about I've drove most of the trucks and all the options so yeah I'm gonna sort of do a review video just on different things that they got right and improvements over Mudrunner and whatever of course another photo moment <laughs> she sits pretty well though on even on steep cliffs like there's a couple of wheels not touching but you'll see in a minute there's a really really steep bit it's so steep that I almost wheelie and it still drives up it and I actually think as I said they found the balance perfectly where it's not quite OP it still is within the limits of a vehicle it's not like it defies gravity it is basically a chassis full of wheels so it's gonna have bloody good grip and those wheels are big grippy mud tires and stuff but yeah it's uh it's very good but it's not OP and I think it's just a nice balance because once you're this far into the game I don't want to go one mile an hour through every bit of mud like I've done that and it is fun it depends what vehicle and what I'm towing or whatever but every now and then you just want to jump in something like this this is the answer to it and just go bombing across the countryside and not have to go one mile an hour and uh, yeah this is the perfect vehicle to do it there is some videos on YouTube comparing this versus the Yar 87 and I've got that Yar I don't even like Yar sounds like okay Yar um, it is good that Yar 87 but this I think kind of blows it out of the water but that's not to knock the R87 for 30 grand odd as well it is a bargain so it is worth picking up that it's obviously like that's a six wheeled thing but it is pretty good it is it is worth it I think this thing's like 140 grand so it's a good job you find it for free I don't really know why I ended up driving down this hill and then for some reason I had a change of mind and I went back up the hill <laughs> and then I sort of worked out a different route this was the road though that's the wiggly road through the mountain which is the only other way to get to that warehouse and I tried coming up here in the Hummer and I had to keep winching to so many trees and all I was doing was towing a little fuel scout trailer I was trying to refuel my Navistar because that thing drinks like 30 litres a minute but you can see here I decided to go back up and you can see how steep this is not even the steepest yet but you can see how steep it is and it isn't struggling it's in a probably a fairly low gear again I haven't got the advanced gearbox but it gets up even these slippery icy rocks it still actually manages it and I kept trying to stop right on the top and it was uh, just kept slipping down a bit but basically I'm gonna plan a route in a second you can sort of see my base in the background But even when I'm stopping and rolling back, it's not like, oh, that's it, once you've lost your momentum, you're gone. There's my base in the distance. That's where I'm going to be heading in a set. There's another good photo moment. But, yeah, it's got no problem sticking where it is now. It's not slowly slipping down the hill or anything like that. So obviously I could follow the wiggly road but the point is just to push this thing as far as I can and see what it can and can't do so there's no point in paying attention to this blue line that much because I'm just kind of going to ignore it and go freestyling. <laughs> so I could go backwards now but again I wanted to be awkward for the sake of being awkward and I'm going to go forwards over here and then turn around down here and then go back up. So even at that angle that doesn't feel like it's even close to rolling that's one thing with uh, that car in 39 that feels like it wants to tip over pretty easily and so does the well the ANK does tip over easily I've rolled that thing 20 30 40 times 
It was struggling a little bit because it's snowy and obviously they're only in the mud tyres but if you look how steep it is when I let off the throttle and go back it almost there wants to wheelie so I'm not that far off vertical and it manages to roll backwards down and then still get enough grip to uh, pull its way back up so it's basically going anywhere you're gonna you're gonna aim it. And you can see, in all this time I've been messing around, going across this mountain and all sorts, I'm only on about half fuel now, so... And I've got still my roof rack full of fuel, so it's definitely... You could probably get a good hour of driving out of it between the fuel tank and the extra fuel on the roof. So there's my base, that's kind of what I'm going to aim towards. Every now and then it doesn't turn, and it's because obviously the front four wheels altogether are the ones turning. You know, when you're bouncing around, once they sort of lift up a bit, you lose your uh, turning grip, but it soon digs in again and gets going. It thought about rolling there, but it didn't. And again, I'm definitely picking the most stupid awkward way possible but I had to give her a good test so in a lot of vehicles really don't like the snow even the uh, ANK that gets stuck not stuck but it goes incredibly slow even on relatively shallow snow that's like the main thing the ANK doesn't like, and I've got chain tyres on it, but it still isn't keen on it. Whereas this thing actually digs into even the deep snow, and it gets really grippy from it. it in, instead of struggling, it digs in and sort of pulls itself even better. I wish I'd stayed in cockpit for a minute there, but... Again, though, in cockpit view, all I'd be doing now is looking up at the sky. I wouldn't... Oh, there you go. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to see where my wheels are aiming or anything and given where I am I could kind of do with seeing what I'm about to hit and tip over on and all sorts. But as you can see I'm now coming back to the uh, base and yeah that was about the most awkward way possible to go along a mountain and over it and back to base and it had no problem whatsoever. Funny enough, those little barriers are like the most OP thing that this thing doesn't like, as you'll see in a second. I was going to go this way and I thought I'll get cocky and I'll cut over here. And because these barriers kind of caught me the way they did, <laughs> I ended up sitting on it like that. But I suppose while I'm here it was a handy little time to show the winch in action. Find something solid enough and yeah, it gets over and... No problem. But the winch I chose is definitely, again, it's got good range and the power is more than enough to pull this thing back off everything. But yeah, it basically goes through here the same speed as it would go along that road. And that's it. Back to base. So yeah, that's about it for today. That's the review. I definitely think it's worth getting. Check my other video if you want to find it. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.